So first of all, what is Redis? So Redis is an open source BSD licensed advanced in memory key value store where keys can contain data structures such as strings, hashes, lists, sets, and sorted sets. So it's an in memory key value store with persistence. That means Redis can be used as a database or a caching layer or a message broker. Now I already said that it's BSD license. That means it's open source. Now Redis is written in C and it's NoSQL database. Now what is NoSQL? NoSQL is an informal loosely defined term for non-relational structured data storage systems like MongoDB, Memcached, CouchDB or Cassandra. So following in the footsteps of uh, other NoSQL databases such as Cassandra, CouchDB or MongoDB, Redis allows the user to store vast amount of data without the limits of relational databases. So in NoSQL databases, data can be stored in non-relational way. Now, what does the name Redis mean? Redis stands for Remote Directory Server. It is often referred to as a data structure server since the keys can contain strings, hashes, lists, sets, and sorted sets. So because the keys can contain these type of different data structures, it's often referred as a data structure server, right? So the name come from remote directory server. Now, what is Redis used for? So as I already mentioned that it's an advanced key value store that can function as a NoSQL database or as a memory cache store to improve performance when serving data that is stored in system memory. And also it can be used as a message broker. So it can be used in place of uh, caching systems such as memcached. Now you must be wondering how to interact with Redis. So Redis can be installed on a server and it can be interacted with a command line tool or command line interface which is called Redis CLI. So using this Redis CLI we can interact with our Redis server. Now this Redis client can be used on any machine and then when we open this Redis client which is a command line client uh, the first line will look like this so Redis then this kind of angle bracket this we will see in the coming videos how to install redis and how we can use redis now let's talk about some of the history about redis so in early 2009 a developer called salvatore san filippo he was an italian developer by the way started the Redis project. At that time, he was working on a real-time web analytics solution and found that MySQL could not provide the necessary performance. So in June 2009, Redis was deployed in production for a website called log.com, which was a real-time web analytics website. Then in March 2010, a company called VMware hired San Filippo to work full time on Redis, although Reddit remains as BSD licensed. Subsequently, VMware hired some of the other developers who also contributed majorly to assist on the project. So this was a brief introduction about Redis. And from the next video, we will see how we can install Redis and how to use Redis. Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can download and install and use redis on your ubuntu operating system so let's get started so first of all what is redis so redis is an open source in memory data structure store which is also used as a cache or a message broker uh, in various applications right so it's basically a key value uh, pair database Mostly I use it as a caching layer in my applications. Uh, you can also use it as a message broker. So let's see how we can install Redis. So when you go to your favorite browser and search for install Redis, 
the first link which you will see here will be from redis.io and here you can see the title installing redis so just click on that title and then you have this install redis on linux uh, link here so i'm going to click on this link and you have uh, the procedure on how you can install redis on your ubuntu operating system so if you want to uh, use uh, apt install to install redis then this these are the commands if you are installing redis on a docker container you might need need this uh, prerequisite to uh, install redis uh, because in some containers you have some minimal distributions right i generally prefer the second option which is installing redis using the snap package manager right so the command is easy snap already comes with the newest version of ubuntu so you can just give the single command and redis will be installed so i'm going to copy this sudo snap install redis and then open my terminal so to open the terminal i can just press ctrl alt t on my ubuntu operating system and it opens the terminal or you can go to the application and click on terminal and it's going to open the terminal just paste the command which is sudo snap install redis press enter and give your ubuntu's password which you use to log into your ubuntu operating system and then press enter which is going to start the installation of redis on your ubuntu operating system it will be finished really fast so redis is installed on your ubuntu operating system so once redis is installed using the snap command you can enable redis using snap uh, itself right so just write sudo snap enable and then redis it's going to enable the redis service right now in order to start the redis using snap you can just write uh, sudo snap start and it's going to start redis right so you can see uh, redis has been started right if you want to stop it you can use uh, stop command if you want to restart redis you can just use uh, restart command and it's going to restart the redis service using snap right so these are few commands you can use to enable and start redis using snap because we have installed a redis using snap on our ubuntu operating system right so once uh, redis service uh, is running you can also check the status also by using this command sudo snap services right so just give sudo snap services it's going to show you all the statuses of all the services uh, which ha you have installed using snap right so redis server is already here and it's enabled and its current status is active right now how to connect to the redis server so in order to connect to the redis server you have this command generally if you have installed the redis using apt install you would use uh, redis hyphen cli right but if you have installed redis using snap this command will not work so you can see this command is not recognized because you need to use redis dot cli if you have installed redis using snap right so just write redis dot cli and you are connected to your local redis server right i can just press ctrl c in order to come out of uh, the cli if you want to uh, give the same name or if you want to use same name right uh, like uh, redis hyphen cli you can create an alias for uh, redis.cli right so just write uh, sudo snap alias 
then the name of our redis cli is redis.cli and then just write redis hyphen cli and then press enter so the alias is created and now you can use uh, redis hyphen cli to connect to your uh, redis server and use it like this okay so this is how uh, you can uh, use redis on your ubuntu operating system if you are not happy with the alias you can also unalias it by just uh, giving this command unalias and then give this uh, give this redis hyphen cli and it's going to unalias it right so let me just uh, use redis cli and then when you give here ping command it's going to in turn give you the pong output this is how you know that redis uh, is working fine right as i said redis is a key value uh, pair database for example so you can set uh, a value for any key by using the set command so just write set and then the name of your key let's say the name of the key is test and the value is my value for example right so just write my value and then press enter so we have created a key called test and its value is my value right in order to get the value of uh, test key just write get and the name of the key which is test and it's going to give you the value for that key right you can just write exit to exit out of your uh, redis cli and from now on you can um, just uh, use redis cli to interact with your redis server on your ubuntu operating system so this is how you can download install and use redis on your ubuntu operating system i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in the next video hey guys welcome to the next video on redis tutorial for beginners in the last few videos we have seen how we can download and install redis now further videos i will be making on my linux operating system that is my ubuntu operating system because more frequently or most frequently this redis server is installed on a linux machine and it's used from a linux machine so it will be more appropriate to go further with this linux operating system but all the command which I will be using on this Linux operating system using the command line are applicable on the Windows terminal also and the Mac terminal also. So the command will not change and you just need to start the Redis server and Redis CLI on your Windows or Mac OS and then follow these uh, instructions which I am giving on my Ubuntu operating system. So if you are on Windows or Mac you just need to follow the same uh, steps you just need to open two terminals on your operating system it can be mac or uh, it can be uh, your windows and of course the linux and on one terminal you just need to start the redis server so i'm going to just start the redis server here and on the other one you just need to start the redis cli okay so looks simple right the same step you need to do on your windows or your mac okay so once our server is running we can uh, minimize this and start working to interact with this server using the redis cli okay now let's start with the data types which are there in redis and then we will see how we can use one of the data type which is string so basically there are five data types which we can use in redis and as i already told you that redis is a key value storage so the key is a printable ascii right and it can be up to 512 megabyte so it can take a really big uh, key for example and it should be a printable ascii and then we can see the data types of values so the values can be strings and then uh, the containers of strings so 
they can be uh, hashes or lists or sets or sorted sets right so the key are printable ASCIIs. we can uh, use printable ASCIIs for keys and for values we can use strings hashes lists sets and sorted sets right and this uh, red string can be up to 512 megabytes okay now let's start with the practical example so we will start with the basics and we will uh, try to set some values and get some values so for example i have set some values already to this uh, redis uh, server so what i will do is to get all the keys which are set you just need to write keys and then the pattern which uh, is asterisk here so asterisk is a wild card and it's going to uh, search all the keys which are saved in your uh, database and then give you the result so for example i have set two keys which is name and name two and uh, it has given me both the keys which i have saved right so in order to uh, see all the keys which are saved in your uh, redis database you just need to write keys and asterisks right now as i already uh, told you that to set some uh, value as a string you just need to use set and then a key for example in this case i'm going to write name three because name and name one is already set so i'm going to just set the third key which is name three and then i'm going to give some name right and then press enter and then once again i will just write keys asterisks and now i can see there are three keys stored in my database right so set is to set a string value and as you have already guessed from my previous videos i've shown you this command which is get command and whatever key uh, you will write here it will give you the value of that key which is uh, mark in this case right in the same way you can do name uh, two, get name two, and it's going to give you the value of name two. okay so get and set we are already clear now there is a delete command del okay so using a del and uh, the key name we can delete some key value pair so for example i want to delete name uh, two for now and then i will just press enter it's going to give me the number of uh, keys affected and in this case there is only one key with the name two and now when i just do this command which is keys asterisk now it just gives me two values which is name and name three and because name two key is already deleted so i will not see this uh, name two again right in the same way for example i want to delete uh, name three key then also i can do del and then name three and then press enter and i can see the result one key affected and then now only one key left which is name okay so uh, this is how you can delete some value right now let's set uh, these names once again so for example name uh, tom and once again do the get for example get name now you will uh, see that the key value of name is overwritten with the name tom so previously the value of name was mark you can see here and now it's tom so whenever you set uh, the value of previously uh, set key then whatever value you will give uh, for this key will be overwritten right so value will be overwritten for that key now for example if you want to delete all the values which are stored in our redis database then we can use flush all command so for example i will set some more values uh, to see this example for example name two is equal to john and then i'm going to give name 
3 is equal to max. So now we have three names. So we can uh, just give uh, keys and asterisks to see that. So we have three keys stored, right? Now, for example, I want to delete all these keys. Then I can give flush all. So just write flush all command and then it's going to delete all the values. So it says OK. And then once again, when we give keys asterisk, then you can see empty list or set. So all the values are deleted using flush all command. So these are some of the most frequently used uh, commands which we can use with the strings. In the next video also, we will see some of the more commands which we can use with the string values. Hey guys, welcome to the next video on Redis tutorial for beginners. In the last video, we have seen how we can use some of the command with the string values. Now in this video also, we will see some more command which we can use with the string values in Redis. So let's get started. First of all, I will show you uh, one command which is valid in a Linux terminal also, which is the clear command. So when you do uh, clear, it's going to clear your terminal, right? So you can see when I have given the clear command, it's going to clear the terminal. And basically what it does is it just gives some of the some space uh, in between your uh, last command, which you have executed and this uh, after this clear. Okay. So now uh, you can see this terminal is totally empty now, right? And now we can uh, start uh, executing some of the other command. So right now our uh, database is totally empty, I think. So we can check it with keys, asterisk. And now let's set some uh, values. And this time uh, we can uh, use a command which is called uh, set ex. Okay. And this set ex is the command uh, which we can use with second. So you just need to write set ex. And this means set the value with the expiry of the key. Okay. And then for example, I just give uh, the key and then I need to give some uh, seconds. So you can see the next option I need to give here is the number of seconds. I want uh, this uh, key to live in my Redis database. And after that, it will be automatically deleted. So for example, 10 seconds, I want to give here. And then I want to give the value of it, for example, max, okay? Now, uh, when I just uh, press enter, it's going to say okay. And when I just get name, it's there, right? And then there is a command called TTL and then you can use uh, the key with this and it says two. And what is this two? So TTL is the command uh, for time to live. So it will check uh, for how much time or how long it's, uh, this key is going to live. Okay. And it says two seconds. Okay. So this is time to live and then the key and then uh, it returns us uh, two seconds because eight test eight second has already passed after after giving this command and once again for example i will just say get name and it's no longer there right because we have just set uh, 10 second expiry on this key so after 10 second it will be automatically deleted right for example, I will uh, just give a 50 second expiry, for example, here. So 50 max. And then I will just give a TTL and then name. And then you can see it shows 44 second, once again, 40 second. And then uh, it will show you the seconds uh, for which this key is going to live. Okay. And after 36 second, it will be deleted. Right. So these are two more command which you can use with the string. Right. Now let's set one more value. For example, set uh, name two and name two is equal to Tom. Okay. And uh, now uh, we can, uh, for example, uh, 
override this value so i have told you whenever you write something like this set name two and uh, some other name for example john then it will overwrite the value of name two for example i take name two as my key and give some other value it will override but if you don't know uh, if uh, name two is there and if you don't want to overwrite uh, name two then you can use this command called set nx and this set nx first of all checks if the this key is available or not and if, key, if this key is not available then only it's going to uh, you know create this key otherwise it's going to just ignore right so let's uh, give this command and it says zero zero because uh, no key is affected due to this command that means uh, when we do get uh, name uh, two we can see this name is not overwritten because this command is used or will be successful when this key is not available in the database right if it's available then it's going to uh, just ignore and if it's not available then it's going to create a new value for example I will just give uh, set nx3 and this value is not available uh, there so I will just give some other name and it says integer 1 that means one value is affected and then I will just do keys asterisk to see the values and I, and I can see name 2 is there and name 3 is there that means this was successful right and I can also get the value from uh, get name uh, 3 also and I can see that value is there let me clear this uh, terminal now if you want to know the length of the value stored in the key then you can just use str len command okay and then the key name for example name 2 and it's going to give you the length of uh, that key that means for example I do get name 2 here you can see it's a three character word and that's the length of uh, this value right and that's the result here okay now for example if we want to set multiple values with the same command we use m set so just use m set and then the key and the value for example this time i want to uh, uh, insert some number so i will just say num1 and i will uh, just give 50 here and then after a space i will just write num2 and then i will uh, say 60 here num3 and for example 70 and so on right and then press enter and it says okay and then when i say keys keys asterisk it's going to give me name 3 and name 2 which were already there and then num1 and num2 because here you can see i have given the same key two times right so num1 was there num2 and num2 i have given two times let's see the value inside the num2 so num2 get num2 and let's see the value inside it so the value inside is is the last set value so whatever is the last uh, set value uh, you will set for this key it will show you that uh, value here right so once again for example i will uh, just give m set m set and then uh, num 3 here and then give the value of for example 60 here and then once again do the key asterisk it's going to give me name 3 name num 3 num 2 name 2 and num 1 right so right now i have two names and three numbers inside my database now if you want to set the expiry in millisecond there is a command called p set x and then it takes uh, the value in millisecond you can see in the intellisense also right so i'm not going to set any value uh, here but i just wanted to show you this command also exists uh, which will uh, take the value of seconds in milliseconds right so this is p set x okay 
Now there is a uh, one more command which is called DECR and INCR uh, which we use to increment and decrement the value of some key. So for example, I want to increment the value of uh, key num1. So let's see the value first of all. So value of num1 is right now 50 and then we can just write uh, DECR num1 and then press enter and now the value becomes 49 right it will give you the result and when you give get num1 it's going to give you the value 49 so it'll, this DECR command will decrement the value by 1 and if you do INCR command to the num1 for example once again the value will become uh, 50. So INCR and DECR is to decrease and increase the value by 1. Okay, let me clear this terminal once again. Now there is one more command to uh, increment or decrement the value by some number and this is for example uh, INCR by so INCR by and the key name for example num1 uh, one, once again and I want to increment the, the value of num1 by 5. So earlier it was 50, right? And then it's going to become 55 because I have incremented the value by 5. In the same way, I can do DECR by and on the same number, num1. And for example, I want to reduce the value by 30, right? And then press enter. And now it becomes 25. So get num1. 1 and the result or the value inside it is 25. Now the last command I want to show here is the append command. So let me uh, just uh, set one more value for example set and then uh, the key name for example I will name it as my key okay and the value here I want to set is hello okay and then press enter and then get uh, my key it's hello right now there is a append command so i can just use a p p e n d append and as the name suggests i can append something to the key right so i want to append uh, to my key so i will just write the key name and whatever string you want to append here so for example in double quotes I will just give a space here and then I will just write world here okay and then press enter and you can see uh, the number of characters I think for the new value right so once again get my key and it's going to give me hello world so space world is appended to the my key right so append is used to append a string. So these are some of the other command which you can use with the string values. Hey guys, welcome to the next video on Redis tutorial for beginners. In the last two videos, we have talked about string values in Redis. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use hashes as values in Redis. Now, first of all, what are hashes? Hashes are map between the string fields and string values. Hence, they are perfect data type for representation of objects. In Redis, every hash can store up to 4 billion field value pairs. Now, you may ask that I have talked about key value pairs, but what are these field value pairs, right? So let me show you a slide and then you will be able to understand in a better way. So this uh, was the slide, similar kind of slide I have shown you in the string uh, uh, data type also, right? So in the hashes, we are talking about hashes now. So in the case of hashes, the keys are same, which are printable ASCII, you can see here. But in the case of string, we were using string uh, array here, right? And that string array was about 512 megabyte, right? Now in the case of, of hashes, we use this kind of map of field value, right? So field is this one and value is this one, okay? 
in the cases of string it was like a like only a string value right so i will give you an example for example i want to store a students uh, database or students uh, uh, info data then what i can do here is i can uh, say student 1 as a key so student 1 as a key and then for example student has what uh, attribute student has for example name surname age in which class he is so here uh, field can uh, be name and then for example name is equal to mark value 1 can be mark right age is the field 2 for example in this case and then uh, for example 15 is the value 2 here right surname can be field 3 here and then whatever the surname of the student uh, it will be value 3 right so uh, for every student we can uh, just provide this kind of map for his uh, information so this is how uh, hash data type as value work in uh, redis right now let's take a practical example and then we will be able to understand this concept so i'm going to just start the redis cli and let me see what are the keys there so i'm going to just write keys pattern and these are all the keys so i'm going to flush all so let me uh, flush all here so all the keys will be deleted and now i'm going to clear this uh, cli and let's start with the hashes right so as we have seen in the case of uh, strings we can just use this set command to set a key value pair now in the case of hashes we can use hmset to set a key field value uh, pair right so for example we were talking about uh, student information database right so just write h m set h stands for hashes here m set we have already seen in the case of strings also right so just write h m set and then uh, for example stu1 for student1 and then for example i will just write name is equal to max right and then i can also uh, give the second field value pair right so for example his age is equal to 15 and then uh, for example class in which class he is so he is in for example eighth class okay this is just an example so this is student one information let me just give this minus here so we will be able to understand properly and then when i press enter it's going to say okay and to get this uh, value there are two ways of getting so you can just say h get and the key name for example stu minus one is the key name and uh, you can give the field name whatever field you want to uh, get or you can just uh, say get uh, key name and here get we have already seen in the case of uh, strings also and you just need to uh, add a h before it and then the student key name it says error because we just need to give the field name also so what field we want to get so we want to get for example name of student one it says max here right now if you want to get all the information about student one you can just say h get all okay and here you can just give the student one key name and it's going to give you all the you know field value uh, information about the student one so for example name max age 15 class 8 okay so let's add one more student for example so once again this command H hm set student uh, 2 and then the name for example tom age is 12 for example and class is 7 okay press enter and once again you can get the information about the student 2 using stu minus 2 right so let me clear the terminal so in this way you can um, just uh, set the hash value 
and get the hash value right now uh, there is one more command for uh, for example h exists and this will uh, tell you if the field inside this hash sets exists or not so just write h exists and then uh, the key name for example stu minus one and then uh, for example i am searching for surname okay and surname field does not exist in student one info right and then i press enter and it says integer zero so there is no information about uh, the surname of student one right in the case of name this name exists right the name field exists in this uh, student one uh, hash set so when i just give this value then it says integer one that means it exists so zero it doesn't exist one it exists right now uh, for example i want to delete a value what i can do i can just say h d e l and it says uh, first of all i need to give the key name so stu1 and i want to delete for example class from it so i will just write class and then i can just press enter right and then i i can just do h get all and the student one key and now you can see class doesn't exist here anymore right for example i want to uh, set once again the same value i can uh, just write hm set and then the same student stu1 and then class 8 okay and then press enter it says okay and once again h get all student 1 and now once again the class is added here okay so you can add uh, and delete uh, the values from this uh, hash like this so for deleting you use h del and then once again for setting you just add this field value pair now there is one more command called h set nx so h set nx so this this command is used for setting the field value if the field doesn't exist so if the field doesn't exist this command will be successful and if the field exists this command will not be successful so for example i will just say stu1 name so name field already exists right and i will just uh, give some other name to the student one right and it says zero so this command is not successful because this command will be successful only in the case of the field not available right so if i do the same command and i know that surname is not there so i will just write surname and some surname and then press enter and it returns uh, integer one that means it has created this field value inside this student uh, set right so once again when i do get all st1 now this student one also have surname information now as in the case of uh, string we were using keys right so we were writing keys asterisks right same you can use for example h keys here and then the key name for example uh, whatever key you want to give here stu1 and it gives all the fields in that hash so by field i mean the name and for example age class and surname only the field not the value of those fields so it will only return the fields of that key whatever we provide here now as in the case of uh, string values we were having decr decrement or incr for incrementing the value so the same is available in the case of hashes also so for example i want to increase uh, the age of some student by some number i can do that so just write h and then incr by 
and then the key name stu minus one for example and the field name is age i want to increment his age and then right now the age is 15 for example and i want to increase the age by two and then press enter and then once again when i do edge get all stu one now you can see the age becomes 17 right so in order to increment the value you just write h incr by and the key and the field which you want to increment now if you want to know all the values of a particular key then we can just write h wells and then the key name stu1 it will just give you the values of that field value pair right so right now it's not giving name or age or class or surname it's only giving the values of them which is max and then 17 8 and the surname value right so h wells is for value okay now if you want to know the length of uh, some hash for example i will just give this command h l e n and then the stu1 the key name minus 1 it will return you uh, the number of fields in that hash okay so press enter and it returns 4 so i know that student 1 key has num 4 number of field name age class and surname so i uh, can just verify that with that okay so four fields so it will return number four now uh, the last command i want to show here is hmget so let me clear the terminal and then i just want to write hmget and it will give you the result whatever fields you want so for example for stu1 stu1 uh, for example, I just want to know the name of uh, that student. I, I don't want any other information about that in student, but only the name. Then it will give me the name, right? And for example, I just want to know the name and age, even though the student hash contains surname and class also, but I just want to know the name and age. It will go, just give me the name and age when I use hmget, then the key name and the field name i want to see so the field name i want to see right now is name and age so i just give name and age and it will give me the result of those field only so in this way you can use hashes in redis hey guys welcome to the next video on redis tutorial for beginners in this video we will learn how to use redis lists so first of all what are redis lists so redis lists are simply lists of strings sorted by their insertion order right so as i already said that a redis list is simply a list of string which are sorted by their insertion order so a list would have a head on the top and tail on the bottom right now in this list we can insert any element from the top also and from the bottom also right so a uh, element can be inserted to a list from the top or from the bottom now sometimes you see lists in a horizontal way right not in a vertical way but on a horizontal way right now if you see a list in a horizontal way your head will be on the left hand side right so your head will be on the left hand side and your tail will be on the right hand side right so redis have some command for example l push l push means the left push that means we want to push an element from the head right left and head are same in the case of uh, lists so this is how redis lists work it's simply a list with the insertion order now let's see how we can use lists in redis so i'm going to start a terminal i have already started my redis server so i'm going to just start the redis cli here and then press enter and i want to show you one more redis command which is a redis cli command and i thought this would be interesting to you 
So I'm going to open our next terminal and here also I will just give a redis cli command and I will give an argument here. So I will just give monitor command here. Okay, so monitor. So redis cli monitor and what this monitor is going to do is it's going to monitor all the commands which you are executing from your cli. So for example, let me give a keys asterisk command here right and now you can see it's uh, showing us that we have uh, given this command keys asterisk at this time this is a, a timestamp at which this command is given okay so this is the timestamp at which this command is given and this is the command which we have given right so let's uh, do flush all here and then press enter and you can see this flush all command is uh, printed here so this is kind of a monitor right so this is going to monitor what are the command you are uh, giving to your uh, redis server okay so let's start with the redis lists so first of all uh, how we can create our redis list so you can create a redis list by just uh, giving this command you just need to give l push right so l push means left push that means we want to insert an element from the top right from the head okay and then we just need to give uh, any uh, key here for example key here i'm going to give num for numbers right and the first key i want to insert here will be for example one okay so first number right you can even uh, insert multiple uh, values here for uh, this key for this list for example two three and four okay and then press enter and these four uh, elements are inserted to the list in uh, this order right now to see all the values in the list you use l range command so just use l range and then the name of the key for example number in our case and then you give the uh, you know start and stop value for the range now redis list index start from zero so for example starting value we can give a zero here and let's say we want to just see uh, the values in the list from zero to ten okay and then press enter and it shows us these values from uh, 4, 3, 2, and 1, right? So because we were pushing the values from the top, we have pushed 1 first, right? So it will be pushed from the top 1, and then we have pushed 2. So the top value will become 2 now when we push 2 here and that's why it's a reverse order of numbers right so first uh, we have pushed one and then we have pushed two at the top and then we have pushed three at the top and at the last we have pushed four at the top so that's why the uh, number four is at the top of the list and number one is at the bottom of the list right now if we want to push uh, number five on the top we can just do uh, l push here so just do l push and the key name and then for example i will do number five here right and then press enter and once again i will do l range you can see five is at the top now if you want to remove the value from the top you give the l pop command okay so l pop command is going to remove the value from the left hand side left hand side means from the top okay so l pop pop is going to pop the value from the top and in this case our key is num and you can see it has popped five from the top that means our uh, list is now up to four okay so let's give the same command l range zero to ten and now our list is one two three four because we have removed five from the top okay let me clear the terminal and uh, then I'm going to show you one more command so let's start with the l range so we have right now four elements in the list now there is a r 
push command and r pop command also okay so when you do r push that means right push that means from the bottom you are pushing some numbers right so from the bottom for example i want to push uh, the value 5 here okay first of all i just need to give the key a name and then from the bottom i want to push the number 5 and then press enter and i will do l range once again you can see uh, this value goes at the bottom 5 goes at the bottom because we have r push we have used this command r push r push means from the bottom push from the bottom right from the right hand side of the list okay that's why this five goes at the bottom okay once again let's uh, do this r push and let's push six at the bottom and once again do l range like you and you can see in the list you have the six at the bottom so in redis this list is sorted by the insertion order right if you push from the right it will go at the bottom and if you push from the left it will go at the top and for uh, left push you use l push and for right push you use r push now as we have seen in the case of l pop l pop is going to pop the value from the top r pop is going to pop the value from the bottom so just give r pop here and then the key name and it's going to pop six from the list which is from the bottom right let's do l range command once again and now you can see six is gone from the list in the same way let's do r pop once again and now five is gone from the list so once again let's do l range and now we have a list of four numbers right let me clear the terminal here now let's give l range command once again and now uh, there is a command called l len okay this means left length and name of the key for example it's going to give you the length of the list in our case this length is equal to the number of element in the list okay so l len is for uh, knowing the length of the list now for example if you want to get some value at some index you just do l index command okay and then the name of the key and the index so index start from zero so zero one two three okay so for example we want to uh, get number two here at index three so we will just say index three okay and it's going to give you the number one because index starts from zero so zero one two and three so index three is the value one here okay let's do index uh, zero here and it's going to give us the value four now there is one more command called l set so you can use l set and the uh, key name and then you can uh, give the index at which you want to insert a value right so for example i want to insert the value at the very top so the very top is the index zero right and then the value itself so i want to insert the value at the zeroth index and the value is five and then when i just press enter it says okay and when i do l range you can see at the top at the zeroth index this value four is replaced by value five right so the size of the list remains the same but the value is replaced at the zeroth index and now the new value is 5 here now let me push some more values here so l push you can do r push also wherever you want so uh, l push num and for example i want to push uh, number 6 here and then number 7 and number 8 here okay and let's do l range and you can see all the values are here right now sometimes you don't know the range or the length of your list so for example you just do uh, 0 to 3 here and it's going to just give you uh, 0 to 3 values right now if you don't know the length of your uh, list you can give l range and then 0 to minus 1 so let's give this command and you can see it gives all the elements in the list so when you do 
L range, the key name 0 to minus 1 is going to give you all the element in the list, right? This was giving the values from 0 to 10th index. So if our list is of length 20, this is going to give you only 10 values, 0 to 10, right? But this is going to give you all the 20 values if you uh, your list length is 20. Now let me clear this uh, terminal and let's go to the next command. So ne the next command is L push X and that means L push if the key exists. Okay, so the left push if the key exists. So we know that uh, we have created a list with the key uh, num right so let's do first of all uh, this l range right and then we will uh, give uh, this l push x okay and this means that insert to this list for example uh, this key exists already so insert to the list if this key already exists which you are providing here okay and this is the left push so we want to push one more value to the top so let's push 9 at the top and because this key num exists this command is successful right so let's do l range once again and this key is inserted at the top let's say we do l push x for a key which doesn't exist for example let's say we have a key for subjects so let's say the key is sub here and we want to push some uh, keys for example uh, once again one two three four five okay but this key doesn't exist right and then when we press enter it returns zero because this command is not successful because this command checks whether this key exists or not and if this key exists then it's it's pushing these values on the top right but because this key doesn't exist this command fails and there is no uh, list will be created now the next command i want to show here is l insert before or after so you just do l insert here and then the key name for example num here and you have the option before or after so before after are the keyword for example I use the keyword uh, before here so I'm going to just write before and the pivot name pivot name is this element okay so I want to insert the value before 2 for example okay so let me uh, write 2 here and the value is this time for example 55 okay so l insert the key name and you can use this keyword before or after here and then uh, the pivot and then the value and once again i do press enter and you can see now the list size is 9 and when i do l range 0 to minus 1 you can see this uh, 55 is inserted before 2 right before 2 is the index from the left right because we have done the l insert okay so before 2 is inserted 55 right you can do after also so for example i want to insert after 3 okay or let's insert after 4 so after 5 we want to insert the value 4 you can see uh, after 5 there is 3 right so after 5 there is a value 3 and we want to insert 4 value 4 here and now our list is of uh, size 10 and you can see now after 5 comes 4 okay and above 3 comes 4 okay so this l insert is used to insert the value before or after some value so these are some of the frequently used command with redis list hey guys welcome to the next video on redis tutorial for beginners and in this video we will learn what are sets and how to use sets in redis so first of all what are sets so redis sets 
are an unordered collection of unique strings, right? So by unique, I mean whatever values set contains, they are all unique. So no repetition is allowed here, okay? And they are unordered, uh, uh, you know, lists. So they are not ordered and they are unique. So let's uh, see how we can use sets in uh, practice. So I have already started my Redis server and on my CLI, first of all, let me uh, just clear all the keys which I already have. So I will just say keys and I have only one uh, key which I'm going to flush all. And now let's create a set, okay? So to create a set, you can just use S for set and then add, okay? So S add and then give any a name, any name to a key. So for example, my set is a key here and then you can add members here, one or many, okay? So for example, I want to have a set of numbers. So let me say this is my first set. So I will name it set one, my set one. And let's say I add here one, two, three, four, for example, okay? And I just uh, press enter, which is going to create a set and add these four numbers. Now here I have provided four different numbers, right? So they are all unique. And to view uh, the members of a set, you just do S members, okay? So S members and the key name, my key name is my set one, and you can view all the members of the set, right? Now, for example, in this set, I want to add uh, one more value. So I just say S add, and then my set one, and I want to add three here, right? And I already know that here I already have three in my set and I want to, uh, you know, add one more uh, three to the set, which is not allowed, right? So it's going to give me zero in return. That means the three is not added to the set because three is already there, okay? We can just prove this by using S members uh, and then the set name. So you can see set is not changed the values in the set remain same because uh, they must be unique okay on the other hand when i do s set one five which is a new member in the set i can just uh, verify this so you can see this time it's added and you can verify it with this value if you get one here that means the number is added to the set and if you get zero here that means number is not added to the set right now, for example, if I want to know how many uh, values are there in the set, so how many members are there in the set, so I can just do S card and then the name of the set, my set one, okay, my set one. And I can see there are five members in the set, okay. Now, uh, let me create one more set. So. I have uh, my set one, let me clear the terminal first. And now I will create a uh, set two. So set add or S add my set two here, okay? And let me add some more numbers here. This time I will uh, add, uh, for example, five, eight, seven, six, four, and nine in this set, okay? And then press enter and I can uh, view this set by S members here and the key name as set two and you can see these are the member of second set right now if you have multiple sets you can subtract one set from other using S diff okay so you can use S diff and this S diff command returns the members of the set resulting from the difference between the first set and all other successive sets so this is the difference uh, so I will uh, just add my set one as my first set and then I will just uh, Give the second set as my set two Okay, and then press enter and it's going to give me the difference between these two set. Let me show you the values of uh, 
the set one also so we can verify so you can see in the set one we have value one to five and then in the set two we have values four five six seven eight nine so from s diff it's going to give you the values which are there in the set one but they are not there in the set two okay so these uh, values these three values are not there in the set two right but uh, four and five are there in the set uh, two so they are discarded so s diff is going to give you the difference that means uh, whatever values are there in set one and not there in set two now if you want to uh, know the s diff and save it into the third set for example then you can do that also so you can just write s diff and then store and then the destination so i'm going to save the difference in a new set so for example my set three right and then uh, the difference between these two sets so my set one and my set two so these three values will be saved in the new set which is my set three okay press enter and then you can see by s members my set three you can see all these values are saved in the set three which is the difference between my set one and my set two now you can do the union also union of uh, the set so for example i want to do union i can just write s union and the set name so my set one and my set two okay so i wanted to do the union of set one and set two and then press enter and it's going to give you uh, these values so union means whatever values which are there in the first set also and second set also the combination of that unique value right so all the unique value which are there in the first set and second set so uh, these value were in the first set and these value which are unique in the second set so this is the combination of s union okay and same you can do for storing so you can just write s union uh, store here so just write s union store and i'm going to store it in set 4 for example so my set 4 the union of set 1 and set 2 right press enter and union is saved i can do s member my set 4 and you can see now it has 1 to 9 which is the union of set 1 and set 2 okay so in order to store use s union store now if i want to remove some members from a set i can do s rem for removing a, a value from a set or member from a set and for for example i want to remove uh, some member from set 4 and i want to remove for example 9 okay and then press enter it's going to remove 9 from the set 4 and i can do s members one uh, once again and you can see 9 is not there anymore okay you can remove multiple values for example 8 7 6 and so on and these will be removed so now i have only up to five values because 876 are removed now for example i want to remove a random value from the set so i don't want to uh, remove a specific value but i want to remove a random value so for example i can do s pop here to remove a random value from a set so my set 4 for example and for example i want to remove only one value from here right so i can just uh, press enter it says three so it has removed three from this set okay so let's do s member s4 and you can see three is no more there in the set four okay so it has picked a random value from this set and removed it okay i can give uh, for example s pop uh, my set four I, for example i want to remove two random values so i can just do that and now it has removed four and one from the set and now my set is only of two values or two members two and five 
okay so s pop is to remove the random value from the set now let me clear this terminal and let me just print uh, the values of set 1 and set 2 once again so set 1 has 1 to 5 and set 2 have 4 to 9 now there is a command called s inter and s inter command gets the element of a set after the intersection of all the specified set okay so it's going to give you the intersection of uh, all the specified set so just do s inter for example my set uh, 1 and my set 2 and then press enter and it's going to give you the intersection intersection means uh, these values are there in both the sets so these are the intersection of both the sets so 4 and 5 are there in set 1 and set 2 so it's going to give you those value only and as we have seen in the case of s diff and s union you can do uh, for example s inter store so you can store the intersection into a new uh, set so s inter store and for example i want to save this in set 5 and then press enter and then i can just uh, see the content of set 5 which is 4 and 5 which is correct now the last command i want to show here is s move command so s move and this command is used to uh, you know transfer or move value or member from one set to the another set right so for example i want to move one from my set one to my set two okay so i want to move this value to the set two so what i can do so first of all the source source is my set one and i want to uh, move it to the destination which is my set two and i want to transfer the value one member one right so press enter it says one that means the operation is successful so let me see the s member or members of set two and now you can see one is moved to the set two earlier one was not there in the set two but now we have one in the set uh, two and let's see the contents of set one also so you can see one is no longer there in set one because it's moved from set one to set two so these are some of the most frequently used command in redis sets hey guys welcome to the next video on redis tutorial for beginners and in this video we will learn how we can use sorted sets in redis so first of all what are sorted sets so redis sorted sets are similar to the redis sets with a unique feature that their members can be sorted. Now, every member of a sorted set is associated with a score. And based on the score, their members can be sorted, right? So you can see in this diagram, uh, the Redis key will remain the same as other uh, patterns. But here you can see uh, a score here. So you can define a score, for example, uh, I will define a score 100 and then the value associated with the score. So the value associated with the score is value 2 and this is our member of a set and there is a new feature in the sorted set which is this score, right? So you can define a score and with this score you can define a member or a value associated with it. And then on the basis of that, we can sort the members of our set, right? So let's see in practical how it works. So I'm going to open my Redis CLI. So the first command we are going to learn here is zadd. And the zadd is used to create a set if it doesn't exist or add a member to this uh, set if it already exists, right? So every command in sorted set will start with this character Z and then whatever its function is, the function name, for example, right? So Z add and then the key name, for example, my set one and the score. So score is one and the value associated with it. 
test so value for example you want to associate it with the score one is a right in a similar way we can uh, define multiple score members here so score and the value associated with it two and b for example three is the third score and the value we want to associate with it is c and then they need not be in order so score can be five now and the value can be d here right or any other value right and then press enter and you can see four uh, members are inserted in the sorted set now to get the members of a sorted set you use z and then range command okay as we have seen in the sets also and then what is your key name for example my set one and then starting value and the end value as we have seen in the case of sets also so in the case of sets we have seen that zero and minus one are going to give all the values in the set right so press enter and you can see here uh, all the values are printed here now you can see here the values are printed not the you know scores associated with them right so for example i once again write z add and then uh, set one my set one and then for example i can just give score 100 here and then the value is e here right and then press enter and once again i will just give z range my set one and then you can see all the values here or all the members here but these are not the scores these are just uh, uh, order ordered number now if you want to know how many number of uh, members are there in our set we can use z card here okay and the key name for example my set one and then press enter and i can see that there are five members in my sorted set right now in order to get the count of members in the sorted set with the scores within the given range we use z count okay and then uh, the key name so my set one and the minimum and the maximum uh, score value here so for example i want to get uh, one two three here okay and then press enter and then it's going to count the number of values between this range right so for example i will just write one two five here and values are four because in between score one and score five there are four values including those scores now i can just write uh, 1 to 50 here or 55 and still it's going to give us four values number of values because the last score we have associated here is 100 so when we write here 101 here and then press enter then only it's going to give us uh, five values and let's say we can give 99 here still it gives the four value so the z count is going to take the score values and then depending upon the score values it's going to give you the number of values uh, in between these scores now let me clear the terminal and uh, to remove any member from a set you use z r e m and then the key name my set and the member so the member here will be the member value so not the score but the member so for example i want to remove the member b so i can just give the value of uh, member uh, b and then press enter and once again i will just give this uh, z range command and now it's giving the same answer because i haven't given the right key name so i must give uh, uh, z m my set one here right and then it gives integer one that means the command is successful and once again the range and now you can see the value is removed from here now if you want to determine the index of a member in a sorted set you use z rank here so just give z rank command and then my set one and the member name so for example d here and then press enter and it's going to give you the index 
of uh, this d right so the index starts from 0 so 0 1 2 right for example I want to see the index of uh, e here and it's going to give me the th index 3 and for example for member a the index is 0 now there is a z rev rank command also so you can just write z rev rank here and this is the reverse rank right so uh, the rank will be sorted according to the score so highest score is the zeroth index right and then uh, the lowest score is the maximum index okay so for example my set one and then the member name for example e is the rank zero here right because index of e is uh, the highest rank rank is uh, 100 for e right and it's the biggest rank that means the index for it will be zero because we are uh, printing the reverse rank here okay for example you want to see the index of a it will be three because it's in reverse order now the last command i'm going to show you here is z score command okay and then i can give the key name and the member name so for example i will give the member a and then press enter it's going to give me the score value of uh, this member right so for example i want to see the score of uh, member e and press enter it's going to give me 100 because score associated with e was 100 right and for example this uh, value doesn't exist in our uh, sorted set for example i just added or given the random value here and then press enter it's going to return the nil value which doesn't exist okay now let me clear the terminal let me show one more command to you so for example i just want to print the range of my set one zero to minus one and this is a c d e and i want to add one more value here so i will just add uh, z add and i want to add this value to my set one and add the score one and i want to add for example a a a a five times and then press enter and it, and it returns me one that means the value for this score is now set to a a a a instead of a for example right so let me do a z range once again and you can see here the new uh, value is added here which is a a a a right and if you remember the score of a was also one right so let me give the same command now which is z score and this time i want to just see the score of uh, a which is one and then i want to see the score of a a a a which is also one so it's totally fine if you give same score to multiple values right so for example i want to give one more value to this score for example b b b b and then press enter and once again the range i want to see this value is added and then i want to see see the score of uh, b b b b so b b b b and you can see the score is still one okay so it's totally fine to have uh, one score for multiple values now what happens to the rank here so for example z rank for my set uh, one so my set one and then b b b b and the index here is two so this is how a uh, sorted set works now there is one more command which is z range by score and then you can give the key name and then the score value minimum score for example one and then the maximum score for example i am going to give here two right and then press enter and i get here three values because uh, there are uh, three values associated with the score one and i think there was no score for two right so no value was associated with two so let's see 
one to four for example and now i can see these values and c also so if you want to get values by uh, the range of scores then you can use z range by score okay so this is how you can use uh, sorted sets in redis there are some more commands which are associated with sorted set you can just uh, search for them and then practice them but these are some of the most frequently used command with the sorted sets hey guys welcome to the next video on redis tutorial for beginners in this video we will learn how to use redis publish subscribe so redis publish subscribe implements the messaging system where sender is called the publisher and the receiver is called the subscriber right now in redis a client can subscribe to any number of channels so let me give you an example and let me show you how you can use redis publish subscribe so you can see i have opened three redis cli terminals in three different terminals right so this is redis cli first terminal second terminal and third terminal now first of all i am going to subscribe to a channel so i can just write subscribe here and then it takes a channel name right and i can give any uh, channel name for example redis or any other channel name so for example my channel and i can subscribe to this channel okay so the name depends upon you right so for example i subscribe to the channel called redis and i just uh, press enter so now this is or this terminal is subscribed to this channel right now from the second cli when i publish some message to this channel so let me publish something so to publish a message you can just use a keyword publish as we have seen in subscribe so to subscribe you use a keyword subscribe and then a channel name for publishing you use a keyword publish and the channel name on which you want to publish right so i want to publish on the redis channel and then your uh, message for example hi right and i press enter and you can see on the subscriber uh, it gets the same message so first of all uh, it will uh, just show you uh, what kind of uh, message is coming so it's a message and then on what channel it's coming and what is the message itself right now if you want to send a big message you can just uh, enclose your message inside these double quotes so for example hello world here and then press enter then it's received here okay now it's possible to subscribe to uh, any number of channels right so you can see i am subscribed to uh, redis from one channel now i can uh, just copy the same command in the next terminal here and then i'm subscribed to this channel so now there are two subscriber subscribe to one redis channel so this is the channel and i'm subscribed to that channel right so there are two subscriber for the channel name redis and when i just send uh, hello world again for example now it is received by both the subscribers right so you can see hello world is received here and hello world is received here okay so this is how uh, publish subscribe method work in redis now when you are doing uh, or using redis in the programming then uh, uh, it's really important or it's really useful so for example uh, recently i created some kind of api where i wanted to listen for any event for save in redis so whatever is saved whenever 
some command comes and uh, something is saved in redis i wanted to subscribe to that save event right and i have used this uh, publish subscribe uh, method from redis in that api and it worked fine so it's kind of listening to the trigger for example for uh, saving the data or some delete deletion of data you can subscribe and then you will get uh, this message on the next side which is subscribing and based on that uh, subscription you can trigger some event okay now let me just uh, close this cli and once again uh, open the cli once again and let me clear the terminal once again and there is a command called p subscribe so you can do p subscribe and then it takes the pattern so for example i can just write r and then asterisk r asterisk here means any uh, publisher when it's published on the channel name which start with r it will receive that message so for example uh, i am publishing uh, this publish redis because this pattern matches this pattern so asterisk is some kind of a wild card here so uh, it's whatever so for example i'm subscribing to r asterisk and i'm just publishing the same message again and you can see uh, it's receiving that message because it's uh, just matching the pattern whatever publisher publishes on the uh, pattern which matches r asterisk for example r and whatever comes after r uh, this is matching that pattern so it will receive that uh, message for example i can uh, just do something like this so i publish on uh, r x for example this also matches this pattern right because we just want to uh, match the first uh, letter of that uh, channel and whatever comes after that it will be matched automatically so this is kind of a pattern matching in redis so p subscribe is used to pattern matching and whatever uh, publisher uh, channel matches that pattern it will be uh, receiving that message so you can see this is receiving that message but this cli is not receiving so because we have subscribed to a concrete uh, channel here which is not a pattern so whenever we uh, just give the redis channel itself then only it will receive the message and this automatically receives the message because here we are just matching the pattern okay so in this way you can use publish subscribe in redis i hope you have enjoyed this video 